Hey folks, so some time ago, I think it was quite a few months, I did a video talking about how I de-googled my phone, how I basically completely wiped it, uh, I never logged into Google, and I just used the F droid to populate my phone with the apps that I needed. And um, today I thought I might do a video where I would just, you know, take a look at the situation a few months on. Uh, things have changed, but I have not gone back to any of the Google services on my mobile device. In fact, it was actually surprisingly easy to uh, to cut loose some of the Google services. Um, and further to that, there is an application that a lot of people are familiar with on the F-Droid store called Yalp, which allows you to take uh, items from the Google Play Store and uh, install them without having to, to log into your Google account. And I did toy with the idea, but um, I've actually managed to find every utility that I needed on uh, on the F Droid store, and it's only been getting better over time. So I've installed some new programs. I've taken off some old ones as well. So I thought I might just do a little bit of a mobile tour here. So I've got a nice little uh, I've got a setup here, so we can sort of scan down all of the applications. Um, some of them are not particularly interesting. Some of them uh, are. So um, anyway, without further ado, let's crack on. So the first one you notice, I think this is a new addition, and that's and OTP. Uh, this is a two-factor authentication application. It actually works with a surprising uh, number of, of websites, which is actually quite good. Uh, I don't use it on a huge number because I'm quite satisfied with my password management setup. I've got a lot of... Uh, it, it, I, I use a key pass as my... Um, uh, as my password manager in a strictly offline uh, capacity. Um, so I feel quite comfortable uh, generating just a really long string for a password, um, especially for like non-essential services. So I, I do only tend to use two-factor authentication where it is particularly important and security is particularly imperative. But for example, with my bank, uh, they have an entirely different in-house system that they use, which is really quite good. And also I wouldn't dream of doing any banking on my phone. I think if I'm truth be told, I think that's just asking for trouble. Uh, mobile phones carry a huge amount of personal data on us as it is. If you just start bringing banking into the mix, I think you're just, well, yeah, I think you're just asking for trouble, really. Um, uh, but, but that's just my thoughts on the situation. Um, and also, uh, just as a bit of a side note on banking and cash and all that kind of thing, if you want to sort of um, take the free software spirit into the uh, into the you know into the realm of finance. I, I think it's uh, rather than go down the route of cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin, I don't think you can do much better than just using, you know, cash currency, cash money currency. Uh, it's a bit old school, but uh, it's something that I've always done. Um, and I've never felt comfortable having every single purchase I've made go on a card on a ledger somewhere that I don't even know where it's kept. Uh, cash money is, is a fantastic way. And it, to be honest, it is pretty convenient if you know how to organize yourself. Anyway, that's just a few thoughts of mine, um, and feel free to share those down in the comment section below. I'm sure there'll be some uh, some thoughts on that too. Uh, Any soft keyboard. This is a nice little keyboard that I use uh, instead of the in-house Android one, and it uh, has nice little prediction fa um, factor. You know, it has nice some nice little. Um, so you type in like the first three letters, and it gives you a uh, tailored prediction, which I quite like. Some nice features there. Uh, that backup is part of the native apps there. Uh, the barcode scanner. That's I think I'm that's available in the F Droid store, and that is uh, what you can use to scan things like QR codes and the like. I don't use it too often, but I think the instance that I use it the most, which I really do appreciate, is SyncThing. Uh, SyncThing, you can it'll get, you can put up a, a QR code on a screen, and you can just take a photo of it with the uh, the barcode scanner, and it very uh, conveniently then syncs up, uh, so you don't have to worry about long strings of, uh, of um, you know, unfriendly text, which is quite good. So, yeah, uh, barcode scanner. It's not something I use very often, but when I do, it's a bit of a godsend. So this next row here, browser, calculator, calendar, camera, they are all just the standard um, apps. Uh, clock contacts, they're again the standard apps. Davdroid. Now, Davdroid is what I use with my Postio. So I use postio.de uh, as my email provider. They are absolutely fantastic. Great service, very uh, ethically run business. They're one of those businesses that rather than tries to conquer the market, just focuses on maintaining a steady, sustainable, uh, you know, flow, and that's absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what I'm looking for in a business. Um, it's one euro a month for your email. 
Email is pretty important these days. It's a very uh, you know professional way that we communicate, especially if you're not big into social media, if you're not big into things like LinkedIn or what have you. Having a good, robust email system, I, I feel, is a bit of a must, especially if you want to keep it open source. Uh, Postio use open source uh, technology and all that kind of stuff. They pay their workers a fair wage. They treat them pretty well. They also have an auditorium, I believe, where they host a lot of events and talks and tutorials about privacy and, and that kind of thing. So it's a good company that I want to support. One euro a month is, is, is you know, if you're, if you're on a st- shoestring budget, as I seem to find myself on most of these times, it's, 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 not really too bad, but um, it is it is an amount that sort of makes you think about it if you are you know thinking about well email something that I've got to you know consider you know looking into the future looking at cases for storage or what have you. But to be honest, for something as serious as email, a dollar a month really isn't that much when you break you know break it down. Especially when you look at the alternative, which is something like Gmail, which I guess would be the next best email service provider and. The thing is, there there are uh, numerous things about Gmail which I don't find particularly comforting, but one of the things that I don't like about it is that they completely change up their UI every year or so. I would find that incredibly frustrating. I find it frustrating when they do it with YouTube, and and uh, I hear only complaints about it when they do it on Gmail. So uh, with Postio, they have a nice, consistent interface because they have no incentive to uh, control your behavior. But... Anyway, at the end of the day, you always pay for email. It's just not always with money. So, you know, and I'm sure, you know, I'm talking to the, conver- I'm preaching to the converted here anyway. But DavDroid is the uh, application that you get uh, that, um, and this is a an open source, of course, it's an open, these are, you know, all my F-Droids, all the F-Droid store applications are open source. Uh, but this is the application that I use to synchronize my contacts, my calendar, uh, part of the, my Postio account to my uh, phone. So w- when you take something like contacts or um, or calendar, uh, it is nice just to be able to put something in the phone and it syncs up with, with Postio, all open source from beginning to end, except with the obviously the blobs or what have you on, on uh, Android. But outside of that, yeah, that's um, that's a really convenient way. It's every bit as convenient as any of the, the major services all done with open source uh done as as ethically as i can i can i can manage and done on a on a very reasonable um budget so i'm i'm incredibly happy with that and it's something uh something that i can recommend um next one editor now editor this is just a very standard um well it's not even that standard it's a, it's a text editor uh, i th- i can't even remember now whether or not it does markdown i do i do write my stuff in markdown but basically uh, editor is just a uh, garden variety run-of-the-mill text editor but the reason I chose this particular one is because it saves files uh, as text files and then I save those those text files into my synced directory that I use with uh, sync thing which is down at the bottom here so when I do my note-taking I have one text file that is synced across my uh, desktop my laptop and my phone so I just write a quick note down or copy paste a URL or anything I need to do with that and that one text file is just my go-to place for notes and it's synced up on all my devices and it's just yeah it's just a text file Um, I don't need any kind of fancy you know uh, proprietary solution for that Uh, it's just a note-taking app but because it saves you know it's just it's just a uh, a text editor you know it's it's not much more advanced than nano for example or or plumer or uh, kate or anything like that it's just basic text editor but uh yeah not all of them some of them just save it sort of internally or whatever but editor lets you choose where you save it so i can just pop it into the sync directory and then all my devices have my latest versions of notes which is awesome i use the standard email offering on my android uh operating system mainly because i don't really do too much with email on the phone i'm really just interested in reading it and get maybe getting a ping when i get a new email but other than that um you know if i was big if i was bigger into email i probably would have something like k9 uh, as my email client however you really can't type that well on a phone so so you know that kind of puts email as as, as a bit of a at a bit of a disadvantage, we say. That, of course, is the F-Droid store here. Feeder is my RSS reader. Now, with my RSS reader, uh, I basically... Um, I chose Feeder because it, w- uh, it was one of about two or three that were available in the F-Droid store at the time. But I did, I did 
switch over to Flim because they recently updated it, and that's also really quite good. But with Feeder, I, I kind of realized that I got myself into the, the habit of, of how it works and the RSS feeds that it pulls down. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, and I'd love your, your feedback on this as well, is like, do you also find that you kind of grow rather attached to your RSS reader, like the little UI changes and things like that? Um, and that, you, that it's a really habit-forming piece of, of software more so than others because, um, you know, I like to read my, my news and I like to get it from a whole bunch of sources. Uh, sometimes, I'll just, you know, tech news or Linux news or that kind of stuff, so it's nicely categorized. Um, and it's just, you know, you, you know when you just want to sit back and just read some, some Linux news, gaming on Linux, great website, or something like that. Um, yeah, feed is pretty good with that. I mean, RSS readers uh, across the board tend to be pretty standard, but once you get used to something that works, it's... You know, you, well, you need not move away from it, I guess. So, but yeah, I quite like that feeder. Flim is also quite good. F L Y M. Uh, it was taken off the Android, or it wasn't updated on the uh, on the F Droid store for quite some time uh, because it started using non-free components, or it started using the the Google non non-free components. But it's uh, recently been updated um, and had a new icon as well. So, um, so it looks like things have improved in that department. It seems. Fennec F Droid. Uh, that is basically Firefox, but as per Firefox's um, terms of service, or the, is it like, the, I can't remember, like the AGPL or something? Anyway, basically with Firefox, if you want to repackage it and rebrand it in a lot of cases, uh, you have to take out the... Um, the icon, you know, the icon, the branding, and all that kind of stuff. So that's why you tend to get like a lot of ice weasel. You tend to get, um, you know, these these kind of Firefox rebrands because they're like a, a free and open source recompile of these browsers and um but they're basically the same thing it's just they, they're just repackaged um but yeah fennec f droid is the uh the firefox that's redistributed on the f droid platform you can actually get um firefox firefox but uh it requires a slight there's an extra step in there you have to download an updater and then the updater goes and gets the firefox so that is that complies with the uh, terms of service, whereas Fennec F Droid also complies with the terms of service, but it's just um, it doesn't carry any of the Firefox branding. Um, File Manager FM Radio Gallery; those are all apps that came with the um, the phone. Ah, KeyPass DX and KeyPass Droid. Um, effectively both do the same job. They access my um, password database. I keep a special password database on my phone in a folder so that it's not synced up. Um, and it only has a small uh, small set of passwords that I use on mobile devices. Uh, truth be told, I don't do much logging in to many of the services on my devices, so it's not too difficult to maintain. But it is, you know, and I, I've changed around my, um, my workflow with this quite a few times. I've sometimes used a USB drive uh, to go into my phone. Uh, but truth be told, now, when I go out and about, quite a lot of the times, if I'm making a trip to the bank or something, uh, I don't even take my phone. Uh, I leave my phone at home, like, quite a surprising amount of time. The only time I take my phone is if I'm going anywhere that I might be, like, if the car, you know, basically anywhere that I might drive to, because if the car breaks down, but breaks down, then you're going to want to call someone. But generally, uh, if I'm uh, if I'm not going too far away from home, for the most part, I kind of leave the phone at home and actually enjoy the peace and quiet out of it. Not that my phone but pings me very often, but it's nice knowing that it can't. It's nice knowing that, you know, there is a section of my life that I can just leave over there and I can worry about what it is that I'm doing in the moment, which is, uh, you know, I find a, a, a good place to be in, I guess. Um, MUPDF viewer is, oh, by the way, uh, Keypass DX, I think it's a bit shiny, it's a bit nicer. I kept Keypass Droid on as like a fallback option uh, because what you don't want to be is, is, is you know, locked out of any kind of accounts. I could probably remove Keypass Droid. Keypass Droid is fine as well. They're, uh, they're both about as good as each other, truth be told. But um, Keypass DX is a little bit newer, I think, and it's, you know, maybe the new kid on the block. i got to admit, the icon does look. I kind of like the, 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 the sort of the green that they chose on the icon there. But yeah, you know, it's, it's small things. One does the job as well as the other. Uh, MU PDF viewer, you need a PDF viewer. In fact, one of the reasons um, I do use my phone and one of the reasons I find my phone to be quite useful is as um, if I'm going to a meeting, it's nice to have the minutes and the reports and the notes and all that kind of thing available but you don't want to have to print out everything especially if the meeting isn't particularly important uh you don't want to have to waste paper and all that kind of stuff so uh yeah it's, it's a good way to go paperless i find uh, the music app is again the one that came with the phone uh, this is new pipe new pipe is a uh, player for youtube 
Um, it works really quite well. You don't log into YouTube though. This is a very interesting way how it works. If you wanted to um, to effectively log into your YouTube account, what you would do is you would export all of your uh, YouTube subscriptions to an O is it OPML file, and then you import that OPML file into NewPipe that has all of your same subscriptions. It works really well. You can download uh, YouTube. Uh, videos you can listen to them audio only so if there's a podcast on YouTube I know if there are a few podcasts that I listen to that tend to go up on on YouTube before they go up on uh, you know their podcasting website uh, or they more reliably go up on YouTube for example so it's nice to uh, just be able to listen to a podcast on YouTube as audio only uh, and you can and also as well the ability to download YouTube videos and download YouTube videos as audio is great be for traveling because you never know what kind of internet connection availability you're going to get. You never know if you really want to connect to just like, you know, hotel internet or that kind of thing. Usually when I travel now, I just use mobile data and just be quite sort of, uh, and, and I ration it. And before I go, I use my home Wi-Fi to, you know, maybe load on a, a film or a, a, a mu you know, an album of music or a couple of podcasts or, you know, something like that. Um, and that's, uh, that's sort of how I roll most of the time. Uh, OSM, this is Open Street Maps an absolutely wonderful and quite frankly essential tool for me now infinitely better than Google Maps I find there is nothing better than being able to download the set of maps for an entire country I download England and Wales obviously uh, because being on the border you kind of need both um, but with uh, and also it comes with a, a great sat nav as well. Um, I have an existing sat nav which I obviously use for as a backup, or uh, but I used to have them both on just to see how well OpenStreetMaps is, and uh, it really is just absolutely fantastic. Um, and you'd never have to worry about uh, connectivity because it uses the phone's GPS and then it uses uh, the downloaded maps that it matches it up against. It can use, uh, you know, it can use Wi-Fi, it can use all kinds of, you know, it can use the, the works as well. You don't have to download the maps in advance, it's just something that I choose to do. Uh, the map files can be quite large, so, you know, take that into account with your phone. But, and sometimes if I travel abroad, I'll download the maps for a country and then, you know, take them off the phone. Definitely worth doing. Uh, OpenStreetMaps is something that has, uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, wowed me really um, it was actually really useful uh, around Amsterdam as well so I, I used it a lot around there yeah absolutely fantastic um, I couldn't recommend it more highly enough uh, okay so uh, next one privacy browser I like privacy browser it's not my main browser but I like the fact that it gives you really good JavaScript controls I browse using privacy browser with the uh, JavaScript turned off by default but it has a, just a nice little button in the corner a little bit like the brave browser but it, you just you know tick the button in the corner and that then you can turn JavaScript on uh, yeah it's a nice little browser I like to keep it on the phone in case I'm doing a bit of casual browsing and just want to browse the internet with JavaScript off uh, for poor, well nowadays it seems better to um, browse with JavaScript off for performance reasons more over anything else and um, yeah you know a fair number of websites do break if you uh, turn off JavaScript so that's why it's perhaps not my main browser. Uh, Fennec is my main browser because at least then you've got um, you can use add-ons you can use the same plugins as you can with Firefox in Fennec so just scroll it to Fennec there. Um, yeah, you've, you've got Firefox um, uh, add-ons and plugins that work with, with Fennec F-Droid, as well as um, syncing, I believe, as well. So you can sync the two, uh, Fennec with uh, Firefox. Um, okay, so yeah, privacy browser. Yeah, I like it. It's actually got some great privacy controls, and um, and you can sort of, yeah, just choose a switch JavaScript, JavaScript on and off with the flick of a switch. And you can do a lot of other settings. You can do settings with cookies and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, Red Moon. Red Moon is another essential for me. Red Moon just basically puts, it's a bit like Redshift or Flux. Is that the, the other one? Where it put it, it basically uh, tints your screen with red light in the evenings so that you it doesn't basically just like keep you awake and... Um, uh, I use Redshift on my Linux desktops. It's a fantastic tool, and it's basically it stops you if you're using computers, uh, at, you know, late at night. Uh, it just makes sure that it doesn't artificially keep you awake by tricking your brain into thinking that it's, you know, looking at uh, natural light. So it just adds that sort of red tint to it. Uh, absolutely uh, essential for me, especially on the phone, because like when you know, if, if you're like the kind of person that checks your phone lasting at night. 
uh, th that can actually sort of keep you awake uh, or it can make it more difficult to go to sleep uh, unless you've got like a nice sort of red glow that sort of doesn't uh, doesn't uh, you know affect your eyes so much uh, I've got Riot IM there. I've got to admit, I, I don't do too much with Riot these days. Um, it's, uh, I've had a pretty good experience with it, but it's just not something that I found a, uh, I found much of a use case for these days. So it's one that I'm tempted to take off because, you know, whenever I could use Riot, I could either use the browser or that kind of stuff. And I certainly don't get uh, too much in the way of activity out of it. But um, I mean, I like it. I like it as a tool. And uh, I've not had too too many issues with uh, Riot or, or the Matrix uh, that that, uh, that it works with. So, yeah, it's pretty good. I sort of can recommend it as a good alternative to Discord, but um, but I'm not, not you know I'm not a big chat room kind of guy. So take that for what it is. Uh, scrambled EXIF. This is a very useful tool as well. This when you take a photo, there is a whole bunch of metadata that goes into it, um, and a lot of people just don't forget that. They just you know upload it willy nilly onto the internet. And they're basically just giving away all kinds of information about their, the, themselves and their phone, more so than the picture itself. So whenever I take a photograph, I use scrambled EXIF to just basically uh, get rid of all the metadata just so that the image is in its, you know, most, uh, I want to say its purest form, or it's like, you know, what you see is what you get kind of thing. Uh, absolutely essential because... Yeah, there's there's a lot of metadata in uh, in images that um, that a lot of people sort of forget about. Uh, so we've got the settings there. Silence. Silence is my SMS uh, messaging client. It basically fulfills the role of the default messenger that comes with Android. It's, I mean, it's a messaging app. Uh, uses SMS, open source, uses some good encryption. Unfortunately, the other person has to be using Silence for the encryption to really work. So. Um, I just use it because it's open source, not because it's secure. But um, yeah, it's a good piece of kit. Works, does everything that uh, that I need it to. SIM toolkit that came with the phone, as did the sound recorder. Soundwaves is my podcast uh, utility. It's really quite good. Um, but uh, you know, it's just a podcast <laughs> utility. That one, you know, I just use it to listen to podcasts, download it, um, manage them. You know, it's a very intuitive interface. And I can certainly recommend it. I think there are quite a few podcast applications in the F-Droid store. Um, but this is the one that I decided to stick with. Um, but there are plenty of other alternatives that I'd, I'd really just be just as happy with. There's some there's a lot of good stuff in the F-Droid store, certainly so. <laughs> this, this is an interesting one. This is a survival manual. Uh, now, it's not one that I use very regularly, but it's an offline manual that that has all all kinds of interesting like information like first aid um you know like what to do if you're lost in the woods or that kind of thing um and it's it's not particularly big it's all offline so it doesn't require internet connection it's open source and it's since i since i do live um out in the countryside it just kind of makes sense to have it there as a backup plan that's kind of and, and if nothing else it's just vaguely interesting to read if you uh yeah, if you happen to be sitting on the bus or something. Sync Thing, of course. Sync Thing is an absolute delight. Now, I've recently gotten into using Sync Thing because of Dropbox not supporting um, anything other than unencrypted ext4. Now, I actually use uh, um, unencrypted ext4 on this main desktop here, so I would actually still be able to use Dropbox. However, it's to me uh, an indication that they really just n are not interested in, in supporting Linux in any serious capacity, and um, you know that's fine. They can do whatever they want. But um, when it comes to th projects that that, um, that use Dropbox that I'm involved in, I'm just going to go through the website at this stage. Sorry, Dropbox, you lost a customer. Another one. Uh, but then sync thing is uh, it's really good uh, it allows me to uh, like a lot of day-to-day -day files that you don't really need to or don't really want to back up in real time i sync it uh, across to my laptop and my desktop so if one of my devices goes down i can then um i've still got access to the files in that event it's not foolproof and it's no substitute for a genuine backup solution but as a real-time uh, safety net sync thing does does work like that. I've got another sync thing folder on my phone, so if I just want to quickly 
transfer a file across. I don't have to plug anything in or get the Bluetooth up and going. Um, I keep Bluetooth off on this by default. I keep Bluetooth off on that by default. I keep Bluetooth off on that by default. So, you know, if I wanted to transfer a file, I, I you know, I got to do the thing with the Bluetooth and sync it up and all that kind of stuff, which is a battery drain and a security hole. So with sync thing, uh, I just put a uh, uh, a file into the sync folder and then it just goes across to my devices and then I can just as easily remove it uh, once I no longer need it there. So it's, uh, yeah, a sync thing is not the easiest piece of software in the world to get your head around. It is pretty, I'm not going to say it's pretty complex, but it, it's got, you know, the concept of it is it's not as user friendly and easy to use as Dropbox or uh, whatever the other, uh, you know, Google Drive or Sky One or whatever the um, the other one is. Uh, but um, once you've got it up and going, and once you've sort of worked out how you know its workflow and, and all the stuff around it, it's actually a real interest. It's, it's a fantastic piece of software, um, and you can use it for countless use cases. But um, uh, it's something that I definitely recommend, and it's a really good mobile app as well. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely one to look out for. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's just made file management significantly more convenient for me overall. Okay, so the Torch again is another application that came with the phone. Tusky is what I use to uh, view my Mastodon account on. It's a Mastodon client, and it's a pretty good one. There are plenty of good ones out there. So uh, I used to use Masterlab. Um, and then they updated Tusky, so I tried that, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's a, Tusky has a, it's not as customizable as Masterlab, but I did find, or it did seem to me that Tusky used slightly less battery. Not that I ever did any specific tests on it, but, uh, you know, like I say on about previous applications here, Tusky, or, the, you know, the, if Tusky went away tomorrow, there would be uh, a number of applications that would fill its place quite comfortably. And that's good to know. It's like good to know you've got, got options and it's good to know that you've got a backup there as well. So not to take anything away from the uh, clients that aren't Tusky because they're really good as well, uh, although at least the ones that I've tried. But Tusky just happens to be the one that I've landed on. I think partly because it's just the simplest in a lot of ways. Uh, I think it can manage multiple accounts, although I just have my Linux Rocks account on there. Uh, that's really the, the main one that uh, that I post on anyway. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's that there. Uh, videos, that's the video application that just came with the phone. And that is my local weather application. I'm sure you can kind of guess how, you know, what that does and how it works. It sort of tells you the weather. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I thought I might uh, I might just do a little bit of a, a recap as to the applications on my phone. As you can see, I've managed to quite easily stay away from the Google services. Uh, I barely, I, I didn't, I, I, I'm surprised that I didn't miss any, to be honest. So, uh, so I'm chuffed with that. I'm pretty darn chuffed. So if you guys are, are thinking about checking out the F-Droid store, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Uh, partly because it's an app store you can actually browse. Like, can you imagine the horrors that await you in the Google, well, we, I, think, I think we're all quite aware of the horrors that await you in the Google Play Store with, with you know, crypto miners through the back door and, and spyware and all that kind of stuff. And on a mobile phone, it's even more important to keep it as, as clean and safe as possible because a mobile phone is just, a, it's just broadcasting data about you day in and day out. And truth be told, when it comes to matters of, of, of privacy, you're really not going to find one in any of the mobile phones that you get on the market now. There's some sort of hope for like the Librem Five, uh, with the uh, which I believe has like hard switches for for its connected stuff as well. But a lot of the time, a lot of it's sort of personal choice that we choose to be connected all this time and choose to ignore the data that it's just giving off. And it's not just giving it off to the big tech companies as well. If you happen to be downloading goodness knows what from the Google Play Store, goodness knows where your data is going. So. Uh, it's nice that there's uh, that the F-Droid store has a great deal of curation and the people behind it are very serious. They know what they're doing. They're very, very competent. And so when I'm looking through the F-Droid store, I'm, I'm pretty safe. I'm safe enough in the knowledge that if I decide to try out a new piece of software, that it's not going to uh, work against me or my device. Whereas in the Google Play Store, I certainly cannot have that kind of assurance if i if i whenever i when i did use the google play store every time i downloaded something i would do a ton of research on it to make sure that it was as safe as possible and uh 
Heck, even some of the mainstream apps now. Have you seen like Snapchat's terms and conditions? It's just horror. It's just, it's a mess. So, F Droid Store couldn't recommend it more highly enough. Um, fantastic work from, you know, like not just the folks at the F Droid Store, but all of the apps that go into it. Thousands of people have contributed to an absolutely fantastic project. I'm incredibly grateful for the experience and for the uh, for all of the software that, that that's come out of it. And um, I've certainly been putting it to some good use. Um, I think that there are certain greater privacy concerns to be had when it comes to mobile devices and truth be told. I think we're losing the war on that one. I think if you genuinely want privacy, uh, you got, you, you got to leave the phone at home in a lot of cases. And that doesn't just go for um, uh, smartphones. I mean, even dumb phones as well. They have to triangulate a single. They have to clock into t uh, to towers. So... Um, so anyway, F Droid couldn't recommend it more highly enough. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on uh, on all that. Let me know your software choices. Let me know uh, if there are any gems in the F Droid store that you think we should know about down in the comment section below. Uh, and uh, I will uh, I'll make sure that there are some uh, playlists up on the end card. So that it's probably going to be like down maybe down at the bottom or so somewhere where I can find some space. Um, this will probably be a picture in picture, so I don't even know where that will go <laughs> off the bat. I'll have to work that out in the editing process. And now I'm starting to waffle really, really badly, like I have done through most of this video, truth be told. But um, yes, uh, so yeah, check out some of my other videos if you are so inclined. I know that quite a lot of people who watch my content are not subscribers. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm told that I'm supposed to remind people who are watching this who don't subscribe to subscribe. See, I, I always imagine that like people who watch my videos are subscribers to the channel. Because um, like when I'm sort of you know conversing with the cameras the way that I am, that's sort of in my mind who I'm speaking with. But um, I know that I think like 75% of my views come from uh, unsubscribers. So hello, casual passerby. I hope you're having a nice day too. Anyway, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.